Hello everyone, my name is Sam and I am an artist based in Brooklyn, New York, and today we're going to be learning how to do some printmaking with your children at home. Um, I just want to give a shout out and a, a very big thank you. We're all grateful to the Abu Dhabi Early Childhood Authority for making this initiative a reality. So today we're going to do some fun stuff. So hopefully you can learn a few little techniques to help you to print make with your child at home. And first what I'm going to do is I just want to share some artists with you. Um, there are so many printmakers out there, but these are two artists that I kind of got excited about. And if you wanted a reference to show your child, this is a great reference. Obviously, our prints aren't going to come out quite as professional as these, and they use different tools and techniques, but these are two artists that are kind of nice to look at. So let's take a look at them. Bear with me while I share my screen. Okay. So the first artist that we're taking a look at is Marissa Keller. She's a printmaker and she's currently working in Portugal and the Netherlands. And through her work, she explores texture, rhythm, and our connection with the natural world through time and sensory experiences. And she likes to play with layering and movement. And so I think that her prints are really, really lovely because you get all this texture, you get all of these influences from nature, and you can see that she spent a lot of time making these prints. There's a lot of layering, there's a lot of dynamic elements to the print. And so when we make our prints, a big thing that we're going to be doing is exploring texture. And especially during early childhood, I think a lot of kids really want to get their hands on that sensory experience. Some child, some children don't love sensory things. Some children do love sensory things. So you can kind of gauge what's best for your child. But if they do really like exploring textures and feeling different things and seeing what things are made of, this is a great project for them because we're really going to explore the patterns and the different feelings that objects have around our house and objects that we find outside. So again, I just really love her work because it's really beautiful and she really draws a lot of inspiration from nature. Um, a great thing about printmaking as well is when we print, we can make multiple editions of something, right? So we can make multiple copies to give to the people we love. So that's another great aspect of printmaking is that you can make as many prints as you want and they can be identical. You can make them a little different, but we'll get more into that in a moment. Another artist that we're going to take a little brief look at is Mary Bryn, and they're a printmaker from California Bay Area, and they use silk screen and pressure prints. So we're not going to be silk screening today because that's a bit of a complicated process. What we're going to be doing is more along the lines of making a stamp print or a pressure print. And so this artist does do pressure prints, and I just really love the way that they layered the different line quality and there's almost a childlike wonder to their work, right, with these scribbles. Um, I've seen a lot of children's drawings that look kind of similar to this. So I could definitely see that this artist might have taken some inspiration from children's drawings. But we're going to play with that today. We're going to play with that repetition, with layering, and those are great words to tell your kids while um, they're making these art projects. And also I just want to add, um, I'm going to give you my spiel for about 30 minutes, and then there's going to be some time at the end to ask any questions that you might have. Also, if you think of a question while I'm giving this presentation, feel free to chat it um, and I will get to it at the end. And if I don't get to all the questions, um, you can email your questions. But for now, if you have a question, just feel free to click it in the chat box. Okay, so, ooh, right. <laughs> so the materials that we're gonna be using today, I have these three tubes of acrylic paint I just picked colors that I thought were pretty and would go nicely together. You can pick your child's favorite color. You can stick with the primary colors and talk a little bit about color mixing. But today I just picked some cool tones. Um, I have an aqua green. I have a light blue violet. And I have another light blue. And so acrylic is really great for this because it's kind of a thicker paint. Temper paint is also great. But again, I know some of these materials aren't always so easily accessible. So if you don't have acrylic or if you don't have temper paint at home, do not worry. There are so many materials you can substitute. You can use ink. You can use quite a bit of watercolor you would need if you're going to use watercolor. Um, I taught a similar class to a kid, to a group of kids, a week ago. And one of the students didn't have any paint at home, but instead she rubbed her materials with oil pastel and then print it that way. So that's another alternative. But if you can get your hands on some acrylic paint, that's great. These are also great. Again, these are professional grade paints. So they're a little bit pricier. You can get some cheaper acrylics at a 
craft store or online, but these are great because they have these little squeeze nozzles. And all I've done is I have put each color in a little container. A nice generous dollop. I'm just using some Tupperware. You can use some paper bowls, whatever you have on hand. And we're just gonna explore with texture today. Like I said, we're gonna make our very own prints. Now, when you're making this with your child, you can kind of work on symmetry or you can work on things that aren't symmetrical. Play around, see what kind of style your child has. Maybe they're just really messy or maybe they want things to be really neat, but this is a really great time to explore that. So I'm just gonna put this on my paper for you. And so the first material that I took was a pine cone. And obviously you can see I've already printed with this pine cone, but that's gonna be our first material that we're gonna work with. And again, there's all different types of printing. There's etching, um, there are wood cuts, there's silk screen, but today we're gonna be doing a very simplified bare bones version of printing. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna dip a little bit in this violet. I'm just gonna dip the tip of it. I'm gonna see what it comes out. I'm just doing these little dots and playing around. Um, a great conversation to start with your child is what shapes do different objects from nature make? Now I wouldn't say this is more kind of cone shaped and it has these flat pieces coming out, but what's really interesting is that when you try to print it, it actually makes circles. So that's something that's great to kind of explore with your child. Okay, so I printed my, my lovely pine cone. Um, my next material, I was gonna use a plastic spoon, <laughs> but I cannot seem, a plastic fork rather, but I cannot seem to find one. So I'm gonna use the metal. The good thing about these acrylics is that they'll wash off the metal pretty quickly. So let's get a different color going in there. A little bit more. Use my light blue. I'm just gonna dip my fork in the light blue. And again, I'm just gonna kind of some wacky marks. It might be interesting to see what kind of creature your child can build from these marks. Maybe you can say, okay, so you have these four marks, but how can we put them together to make something a little bit? more interesting. So I'm just going to kind of make a, make a circular shape. I'm really stuck on circles today. But again, you're just kind of playing. Um, I had a student in one of my classes tell me that they were finding objects in their home that reminded them of animals' footprints. And they wanted to create a scene that was kind of like an animal walking all over the forest. So I see something similar with the fork. And again, I'm just kind of composing more of an abstract work of art, but it's really fun. Okay, so I got my fork in there. Let's see. What next, what next? My next material that I, I got is, I got a piece of a sponge. Sponges are really fun to use when we're printing. Um, you can kind of dip dye them. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this light blue and expect your hands to get messy. So give that as a warning. A little bit of this purple, I'm gonna use all three of my colors for this part. And, and a little bit of my green, blue. I'm just gonna see. Again, it kind of almost looks like a fingerprint. And I'm going in there. I really loaded it up with color. I'm getting nice and messy. Um, <laughs> acrylic paint, the one downfall is that if you get it on your clothes, there is a chance that it will stain. So if that's something that you're really worried about, but you like the idea of this project, um, I would maybe shoot for some temper paint instead. I'm just really bubbling it up here. Make a lot of different cool shapes from this. 
And something that I'm having underneath is I have another piece of paper because something that you can do simultaneously is you can make a ghost print with your child. And now when I say a ghost print, I mean that I'm not re-inking my object or I'm not repainting my object. I'm kind of getting all, all the paint off of it that I can. And instead of revamping it and re-adding anything, I'm just going to do a print with whatever residue is left on there. And that's called a ghost print because usually it gives kind of a ghostly, sheer, um, translucent image. But see, I still have a lot of paint on here, so it's not super ghostly. But again, if I kept going at this, the less paint, the more of a ghost print it would look like. But I have two works of art going now. Um, you can kind of use it as an inkblot test too. Ask your child what they see when they look at this. What does it remind them of? Like I could say that maybe this one reminded me of clouds in the sky, or even it kind of looks like a map. These look like little undefined continents floating around. But I'm gonna take out my next material. I might actually grab one more color because I am realizing that I really like these blue and green tones, but maybe I wanna add a little bit of contrast in there, something for my next shape that will kind of make it pop. So I'm gonna grab another color. I grabbed a pink and a yellow. And I think for this next shape, maybe I will use a little bit of yellow. So the next shape I found in my kitchen and you can find it in your kitchen, hopefully. But again, you can print with anything. You can print with fruits, you can print with vegetables. Really help your child to explore what different textures there are out there and what kind of shapes and how beautiful and complex objects in nature really are. We're using some artificial objects, but we're also using some objects in nature. So I'm gonna take out half of my onion. I'm gonna print with my onion. And I think I'm gonna use some pink to print with my onion. Let's move that a little bit of pink into the corner here. I'm going to print with my onion and I'm going to use, I'm just going to rest it in the paint like so, kind of dollop it in there. Got kind of a nice little build up. My whole kitchen smells like onions now and I'm just going to print with it. I'm going to press for three seconds. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let's see if I can really get that spiral. Again, we're experimenting here, so maybe we won't get the spiral, maybe we will. One, two, three. I'm not getting a super defined spiral, but I am getting those lovely circles. And as you can see, I'm not repainting it. I'm not re-adding any um, material on top. So these are ghost prints that I'm doing afterwards, right? They're kind of raw. They look like little ghostly bullseyes. I'm going to add maybe a little bit of yellow and see how the yellow looks. Again, my apartment is smelling very, very oniony. <laughs> you could also use apples. Um, if you cut them down the middle, I printed with apples before. Oh, that one looks kind of cool. But I really like um, another great conversation piece when you're doing this is if you again look at an onion from the outside it just kind of looks like a sphere right but once you cut it open it's fun to explore all of the intricacies that are going on within it and how that beautiful spiral happens it's really fun to talk about and I'm just layering um it's also important to kind of reiterate to your child that when you're making art, it doesn't always have to be representational. It doesn't have to look like anything specific. Um, it can look completely abstracted. And it's kind of fun to make these abstract pieces and see what we can identify in them that is more of a figurative object or a reference to something real. So it's fun to play around with that element as well. Okay. 
So I think I'm good with my onion for now. Maybe I'll do some ghost prints at the end. I'm gonna let that paint rest there. And some paint all over my table. Got some very messy hands, can keep working with it. <laughs> and I also made a different shape with the onion. I'm having a lot of fun with the onion, I kind of cut it into these wedges. So I'm gonna maybe try and make some prints with that. And again, I'm just dipping the onion in. Um, you feel like you got a lot, you can kind of wipe the excess off on the edge of your cup. Okay, so this is really loaded with color. Um, again, that's something that you can explore with your child. When it's really dolloped on there like that, it's not going to seep into the grooves of the onion, right? If you look on this side, even though I got some yellow paint on it, you can really see those indents and those lines. And that's not going to be as apparent when you have a really thick layer of paint on there. But let's see how it looks anyway. Let's play around with it. See, it's, it kind of looks like an ear, um, but you can't really see those intricate designs, right? It's more of a blob, but that could be what you're going for. So I'm going to continue to kind of do some ghost prints and see if I can get some of those more interesting lines to come through. And again, maybe this looks like a jumbled mess to you. I think it's kind of starting to look sort of beautiful. Um, I'm going to work back into our first one, but I'm going to add some more stuff here. And again, look how cool the onion itself looks. I think it's fun to kind of pause and show your child. Look at how interesting we made the fruit of the vegetable look. You could even go further, especially with onions. It's great. They have different layers. You could peel off a layer and try and print that if you wanted to. There's so many different kind of avenues you could take. Okay. So this one is getting a little busy. So I'm going to move back onto also paper towels, always an important thing to have on hand when making any art project, especially if you're as messy of a creator as I am. But Okay, so I have this print looking pretty good. <laughs> it's looking pretty messy. Um, and I'm going to go back into this, my more clean and kind of toned down print. Let's see, is there interesting? You could even, if you're really short on materials or you just want to try it, you could even print your paper towel. So I'm going to try that. Maybe I'll take a little bit of, again, I really like the way this goldish yellow looked with the, the blues. So I'm gonna put a little bit, I'm actually just gonna put it directly onto my paper towel. And I kind of smush it in there, get it into all those beautiful designs. And the cool thing is paper towels have all different types of designs. So you might have a more interesting <laughs> paper towel than I do at home, I don't know. But I'm gonna just print it stamp it in there and see, maybe kind of delicate. What I can come up with and get those little dots. I didn't really get those porous dots. Let's see if I am capable of doing it. I don't know, it might not work because the paint is so glopped on. But again, these are just experiments, right? You wanna kind of see what we can come up with. So really just getting a nice mess on them. <laughs> okay, so we have two works of art here. Let's look. Hello, hello. <laughs> um, I have this first work. And this is the first one we worked on. So it's fun too if you take them away from your child for a few moments or maybe even an hour and then you bring it back out and you say, well, do you remember what object made which mark? So we have our fork made this kind of fun little four line pattern. Um, I know that these gloppier pieces were made with a sponge. I have a little piece of sponge here that I used. I think it'd be really fun to use kind of a big sponge and see how porous it gets. You can really get the paint into all those little holes and grooves and see if you can get those shapes on the page. Um, and then we used our paper towel for the little gold pieces. And we used our pine cone for the circular pieces. 
So that's a fun little work of art that you could hang. You could make it into a card. It'd be fun to try and recreate the exact same pattern, see if you could do it. And we have the second piece that we were working on. I really like these kind of circles. There's a lot of ghost prints going on, right? We said that a ghost print was when we really ink it up, we really add a lot of material, and then we don't re-ink it as we print. We don't repaint it as we print. We just keep going with whatever is left on there. So that's kind of what we did with the onion. And it made these really cool target shapes. So I think that they're really fun. So I'm gonna make one more. And for this one, I'm gonna try, and this is not my strong suit, but I'm gonna try and make it more, a little bit more neat and perhaps symmetrical. Not totally symmetrical, I'm not gonna set myself up for failure with that one, but um, let's see if we can make kind of a neat, interesting print for maybe a child that is more precise. Um, you know, every artist is different. Some kids, again, like I said, I was always one that tried to get really, really messy. The more stuff I could get on my hands, the better. I love sensory things. Um, but I've also worked with children who are kind of the opposite of that. They like things very linear. They like things very um, precise, very exact. Um, they like them to have a logic to them. And that's totally fine too. This project works for both. Um, and it really just depends on which direction you want to take it in. So let's do one more. There. Okay, so if I wanted to make this a little bit more precise, and the good thing is if you are making one that's like this and it's a little bit messier and more chaotic, it's probably a little hard to recreate that. Like I said, a great thing about professional printmaking is when you do an etching or a reduction print or a woodcut or a silk screen, you have your template and you can just print as many additions as you want. So you can make as many copies of your artwork as you want. Obviously with this method, it'd be a little bit harder because this is a very random way of doing it. So let's see if there is a way for us to make a more specific, a more um, clean and pristine print that maybe we could make a bunch of additions of. And that's fun to talk about too. They can number their additions, um, first edition print, then the second one they make. But I'm gonna take this onion again because I really like it. And I think it's a really fun shape to work with. I'm gonna re-ink it with a little bit of the yellow. It. And again, I'm trying not to dollop too much on. I'm actually, I dipped it in my paint, but ooh, there we go. The first mark dropped it. Okay, but I'm gonna um, put it, I'm kind of pressing it in there a little bit just so that it's not super dolloped on. But okay, let's see. I'm gonna press this for five seconds. One, two, three, four. Five. It's also a great way to practice counting with your little one. I'm going to peel really slowly. So we got kind of a cool shape there. Okay, so I'm going to make this, again, like I said, as neat as I can. Maybe I'll make another circle down here. I'm going to count for five again. One, two, three, four. Sorry if I'm making you dizzy. Five. Okay, let's lift it. Okay, so this is looking a little neater. So then again, I'm gonna kind of do a pattern. I'm gonna take out, I have one more onion wedge that I have not yet used. I'm really loving the onions. A little piece of it fell out. Um, maybe I'll take some pink with this one. I think it's nice to start with three colors. And I'm gonna just put that in there a little bit. You can use a paintbrush for this too if you don't want to get messy. Um, but again, when you're making art with your child, a great thing to do is just kind of cover the entire table <laughs> in newspaper um, and kind of let them get a little wild with it because I think that's one of the things that is great for children um, about art, the fact that they can kind of be a little bit more expressive, and a little bit messier. Okay, so it even kind of looks like a rainbow. So that'd be really fun if we could I'm gonna put a little bit of blue. Again, we can talk about how, how do these colors blend? What happens when I mix the, the blue and the pink? I'm gonna make, it's not exactly a rainbow, but let's see if we can make some interesting shapes. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try and be as delicate as possible. 
here. I'm going to press for five. One, two, three, whoop, four, five. And I'm going to lift it. Ah. I'm going to do the same thing up here to mimic it. One, two, three, four, five. Right. Press, press, press. A little ghost here. Okay. Hmm. What shape do I want to add next? Well, this little piece of the onion fell out. So maybe I can use this little piece of the onion. I'm going to just use the bottom of it because I think that would make a cool shape. You could have hours of fun just dissecting one vegetable. <laughs> I'm going to make a little. What are these? It's kind of starting to look like the sun in a wreath. Do something up here. Okay, I'm gonna load it up with a little bit of meat. It's starting to look again. It's not super neat. <laughs> I don't think that this project is ever gonna be super neat. Um, but we're doing the best that we can. So let's put maybe a little bit of sponge in there. Also, it's just fun to look at how the sponges look after you paint on them. But I'm just going to use, it's a little dry now. It's been sitting in the paint for a little bit. I'm going to just try and make some ghost prints with this and see if they give an interesting texture. If they don't, oh well, let's just try it. I'm going to press, I'm going to press this for again five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see if we can again mirror that maybe up here. We go one, two, three, four, five. Kind of like in the way it's coming out. <laughs> um, let's see. Should we bring our pine cone back into the mix? I want to see if maybe there's a more interesting way to kind of do this. I'm going to try and print the bottom because it does this really beautiful kind of floral shape. Let's see if we can get that onto our page. No promises. I'm going to take I like this purple so I'm going to take a little bit of this purple and it's my widest bowl so it'll fit my pine cone. I'm trying to kind of really get it doused on there. I'm going to add maybe a floral shape here. I'm trying to be delicate. This tiny cone has been sitting for quite a bit, so it's a little bit brittle. Oh, nope, just dots again. <laughs> again, we're experimenting. Put some dots here to kind of balance out the composition. Some more dots. Okay. That was not as exciting as I thought it was going to be. But again, that's something that's really fun, you know, to say, look at the shape here. Do you think that this is going to be the same shape on the page when we print it? Um, and you can talk about why it's not the same shape. The paint only touched the tips of the shape, and the tip was the only thing reflected onto the page. And why do you think that happened? So you can get a conversation going. Um, obviously pretty easy easily with kids they're very very curious but there's a lot of different things you can talk about um and again i love nature this is really fun uh because you can explore nature and obviously you know i'm in new york so i have different natural elements than someone in a different part of the world might have but that's again another great conversation you know i have some pine cones in new york and acorns and leaves um what do you have around your homes what kind of elements could you find in nature? Are they similar to mine? Are they completely different? Um, it's a really fun thing to talk about. Okay, this one's looking a little bit symmetrical. Oh, not symmetrical, I don't know if it's symmetrical, but it's looking a little neater than my other two. I think that it's missing something. I, hmm, maybe I'll try one more time to print with this messy paper towel that I've kind of been wiping my hands off in. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of pink. And again, I'm just going to kind of dab it on there. Actually, I'm going to take a little bit of pink. 
a little bit of purple, and a little bit of that light blue. Mix them together, see if I can make kind of an interesting tie-dyed concoction. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna see kind of shapes I can make. And this is kind of looking like just a blob. Didn't get any fun texture, but that's okay. What I need, maybe. Okay, so there we have it. <laughs> um, let's take a look at our three prints. And again, I'm just gonna, since I didn't get any questions so far, if anyone does have a question, they can, I believe, raise a virtual hand or they can chat it. I think it's easiest if you chat it. Um, now would be a great time to chat it. I'm getting blue paint on my face because I keep wiping it, but let's take a look at our three paintings that are three prints that we made. Okay, so the first one we made, right? Again, a little bit more abstract. They're all abstract, but this one's really all over the place. Um, our second one, we have more circular forms. These are all very organic. Yeah, and I actually really like the way this one came out. I think it's fun. And then our last one where we tried to be a little bit neater is right here. <laughs> I think it kind of looks like a, a small child made it, which is really saying something about my artistic ability there, but um, it's really fun. And so something that I'm going to talk about, since we do have a little bit more time, and I don't have any questions coming in. Again, if you um, have any questions, feel free to chat them. Uh, I know I can go on forever. So <laughs> just feel free to chat if you have any questions. I'm going to just show you something that I think is fun. And again, this might be um, depending on what age and level your child is at. Uh, it could be appropriate for their age or it could be a little bit advanced. Um, I would say if your child is under four, this might be a little difficult, but over, this might be something fun for them to do. But what I'm gonna do is I have a Sharpie and I have a finer point pen. I'm gonna go in with my Sharpie, it's a little bit thicker. And I'm gonna actually add some detail and defining to my print. So once it's dry, this one's still a little wet. I would recommend this being the second part of your project. Maybe you do later in the day, but I only have right now. So I'm gonna do it now. Um, and I'm just gonna try to be gentle, but I'm gonna add maybe some fun details to make my print more interesting. And I don't really have a rhyme or reason. I'm gonna kind of go for it. I would say if you have older kids at home um, and you are looking for something to do with them, again, this is really fun for adults to do, I think, but, um, but this is, I guess, geared towards the smaller children. If you have a child that's a little bit older and you're like, I wanna do a printmaking project with them, but I don't know how much they would like this. Another thing that you can do is you can purchase scratch foam. And scratch foam is really fun because it kind of gives them a taste of etching. And what you do is you use a sharp object, like a, you could use a toothpick or a pencil, actually a pencil works best, and you draw into the scratch foam. Um, you can find it on most art supply websites and it's called scratch foam, it's white and you draw into the scratch foam and then you can ink it up if you have a brayer or you can paint on it with paint. You paint on it and you flip it and you press, press, press for about 10 seconds and you will have a really cool print. Um, and the good thing about the scratch foam is if you're working with a pencil, you can do more figurative stuff. You can draw actual stuff from life or you can just do a crazy pattern if you want, but scratch foam is really fun. It's a little more difficult for early childhood. I would say that it's best for maybe ages like nine to 15. So that's just something fun to think about if you do have a little one that's a little older. 
Um, but this is also fun for older children, I think. Then I'm just kind of outlining these shapes. I don't really have a rhyme or a reason. But I want to make it look more interesting. I mean, you don't have to just go in here with Sharpie. You could go in here with pencil too or watercolor paints. do whatever you think would be fun. But I like Sharpie because it adds a very different kind of graphic, um, novel graphic element. You see a lot of those bold lines and comics. So it adds kind of a fun little different element to the print. Um, all right, let's do the same thing down here or something different. I'm gonna maybe add some get more into this. And again, I'm not doing anything complicated at the moment. I'm just doing some stripes and some different little doodles. You can get really complicated or really simple. I'm just kind of having fun with it. Get some more stripes. Just kind of adding depth to it. I think um, a lot of times because these are abstract, I think actually kids do the best with abstract because they can come up with really fantastic stories and they have really wonderful imaginations. Um, but a great thing to ask them is maybe for this one in particular that I'm doing, say, where do you think this is? What do you think is happening here? Um, is this some weird planet? Or is it someplace magical or is it someplace that looks more familiar? Maybe this looks familiar to them. I've never been any place that looks like this, but maybe your child has, I don't know. So again, art is a really great conversation starter and a great way for children to use their imaginations. Go in and define shapes and change them a little bit, kind of like I'm doing here with the black turkey. Changing the shape a bit. Um, and imagination is such an important um, tool and experience for early development. It's really important that they're using their imaginations. Um, and it's really fun. I think that when we become adults, some of us lose a little bit of that imagination. And I think that art can kind of help even adults regain it, but really help kids to explore it to the fullest extent. And imagination is so important. Oh, I, go. I like the way the black actually looks against here. So, And again, I always use these projects as kind of a base or a jumping off point. Um, you can get a little bit more involved. You can always add layers to art projects. Um, <laughs> I say this all the time, but especially when kids are a little bit younger, I think their favorite thing to say is, I'm done. Um, so it's like, I'm done, I'm done. But you always have to challenge that I'm done and see what they can add and see how they can kind of push the project. So if they printed with everything that you had in your kitchen and they were like, okay, I printed with everything that we had in the kitchen, I'm done. You could say, oh, well, what if we drew into it? How would it look? And if they take a marker and they do what I'm doing and they say, all right, I drew something. I made a character coming out of one of the prints. I'm done. You could say, well, what if we collaged on top of it? What if we added paper? and newspaper on top of it, glued it on top. How would that look? How could that change it? It's fun to watch your artwork evolve into something different. Kind of like what I'm doing now. I'm actually gonna get rid of these stripes because I like the way that the black looks better. Um, another great thing about this project is especially um, if you have toddlers or early preschool, 
a really great thing for kids to have is choice. The ability to choose um, is wonderful. And this presents a few opportunities for them to make choices. Um, you know, I said at the beginning, oh, I'm gonna use a pine cone, an onion and a fork. But instead of laying out the materials you could give them the choice of which materials they find the most interesting. Um, and again, I think it looks, it's really fun to use food in this project. I think um, it could be a really fun thing for you to do with your child to just kind of look through your kitchen and say, what do you think would make an interesting print? What do you think would make an interesting artwork? So have fun with it. It's going to turn into, but that will be interesting. I think here I was kind of inspired by the sunrise because where I am in New York, the sun only rose a little bit ago. Actually, it's not even a sunny day here. It's very gray. <laughs> so, nice day to stay in and make art. I could probably spend another three hours working on this. I don't think um, <laughs> that Early childhood always has the attention span to work on anything longer than kind of 15 minutes. So you could also, like I said, take this project in bursts. I like really that part wood. It's kind of more interesting now. I'm gonna add. So let's say that you are printing with this onion and you're doing it on white paper. It's really fun to do it on newspaper or a piece of red paper and say, how does this look different now that I've used a different piece of paper? How does using a different piece of paper change the way that my artwork looks? So I should have done that, but I got very caught up in this, so I did not. But that's a really great thing to, to do, um, and it totally changes the artwork. And again, it's really fun if you have kind of a pad of uh, color, colored construction paper. That's something that's always really great to have on hand. Again, it's kind of uh, easy to order online, but I don't know what everybody has access to, and I don't want to assume that everybody has access to. The materials that I do. So if you don't have access to um, construction paper, newspaper, magazines, those are really fun to use as well. So you can always find an alternative material. I think we have about five more minutes. So again, remember if you have any questions or anything, feel free to ask. Um, otherwise, I'm just gonna continue to work on this and I will kind of give whatever advice I can think of um, as we go. And I know, again, that a Sharpie might be a little bit more of a permanent material that you might get a little nervous giving to a younger student um, or a younger child. So if you want to do something similar, but you're like, oh, I don't want to bring Sharpies into the mix, um, washable markers are great. Crayola makes some 
some wonderful washable markers. Um, if your child is trying to fine tune their fine motor skills, um, Crayola also makes these wide grip markers that are really great for younger kids that are just starting to learn how to kind of use a marker. Um, so that's something great to look into. But that's another wonderful thing about this project is it can kind of challenge your child's fine motor skills um, and kind of get them to exercise maybe a muscle they're not used to. And you can, again, if your child um, doesn't have a super fine grip yet, doesn't have the mechanics for that yet, you can use larger objects. But if you want to challenge your child to kind of use a pinching motion or smaller movements, you can use smaller objects. Um, and again, that's just something you can gauge. I think that you always know your child better than anyone else. So you can always decide what would be the best. Like the black is taken over in this um, picture. And I think I like that it has. Let's see, um, like I said, when you put a print up against a different color, it can kind of change it. I think just by adding that black to the background, it completely changes the way that the objects fit in space. So again, that's a really great conversation that you can have. Um, how does the background color affect the space? You can talk a little bit, a little bit about positive and negative space. What objects are in the negative, what, what's, what is the negative space? What objects are in the positive space? Um, all just really great things to consider. the shape a little bit yeah. Adding some. Okay. break up this shape by adding some black in there kind of falls into the space a little bit and then I think if we and look at where this all started. We really transformed it. And I think anything with paint is really exciting. Again, like I said in the beginning, I'm kind of a broken record here, but you can also use this as a great opportunity to talk about color mixing. Um, I teach a preschool class and they're really into orange. so. <laughs> You could have a really fun time um, mixing a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow and printing with that and talking about how the colors change and you make that orange. It's always a really fun element to add to your, to your project. Um, all right, everybody, I think that we are coming to an end. Um, I'm just gonna show what we did one more time. Remember, if you have any questions, I think that you can pass them along. I didn't get any. Hopefully um, I answered any questions if you had any but we had our first print, our second print, and the one that I will be working on <laughs> probably for the rest of the day to make it a little bit more interesting, but our last print. Um, I hope that this is something really fun that you can do at home. Remember that it does get a little bit messy, so you can always um, put paper down, put a smock on, put an old t-shirt over. Um, those are all helpful and sometimes encourage some of the messiness because it's a really fun opportunity for your child to kind of let loose and just have fun making art. Um, all right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that it was helpful and I hope that everybody enjoys the rest of their day.